So in this lesson, I want to talk to you about how to find horizontal asymptotes of functions. Um, before I get into that, I want you to recall or remember um, that the way we find vertical asymptotes is by finding the x values where there's division by zero and where the limit doesn't exist. So most people sort of have this mental idea that you find vertical asymptotes by setting the denominator equal to zero. And in one of our previous lessons, we sort of cleaned that up a little more and said, yeah, find where there's division by zero, but also look at where the limit doesn't exist, right? Finding horizontal asymptotes is completely different. And I wish I had a way in my, um, you know, program here to sort of like make that flash on the screen. I don't know if I can. So maybe if I just sort of like shake this a little bit, it, it'll let you know. Like, I, I can't express enough how completely different finding horizontal asymptotes is. I hear all the time people say, oh, vertical asymptotes, that's where the bottom is zero. So horizontal asymptotes, that must be where the top is zero. No, completely wrong. Um, finding horizontal asymptotes, this actually requires limits, right? We need limits in order to find horizontal asymptotes, and, and, and I'm going to show you how we do that. Um, but I wanted to get out of the way first that, that finding horizontal asymptotes is a different process from find, finding vertical asymptotes. Now, what does it take a, a minute or maybe two to talk to you about what a horizontal asymptote is? Because I feel like our, our understanding of asymptotes may, may be weak. Um, I feel like when I ask, hey, what's an asymptote? People say, like, oh, well, it's, it's a line that you can't ever cross, right? Well, if that's what you think an asymptote is, then, then, then prepare to, to sort of be blown away by this. I'm going to draw a function that has this horizontal asymptote. Okay, I'm going I'm to draw it in blue. Ready? Here it is. Here's my function that has that horizontal asymptote. My function hit that horizontal asymptote many, 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 many times. In fact, in my mind, if I was able to sort of keep going and zoom in more and more and more on this graph, it would keep hitting it over and over and over and over and over again. And the reason is, the thing about, uh, the, the, the important thing about an asymptote isn't that you don't touch it. It's that as you go on and on and on in the function, your function is acting more and more and more like that line. So, I mean, there it is sort of in common English, right? This idea that the asymptote is a line that your function acts more and more like as the function goes off to the right or to the left. But, but that isn't really very precise. It's not very mathematical, right? So, so I sort of want to address this more, right? What do I mean? Like, mathematically, how could I say more precisely what it means for a function to go off to the right or left? Like, the idea is, sure, you know, as I go along, you know, as I keep going further and further and further to the right or further and further and further to the left, my function is acting like a line or like some constant value. So mathematically, how can I say going off to the right or going off to the left? And the answer is, it's by taking the limit. In fact, it's by taking the limit as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity. And that's how we find horizontal asymptotes. And I shouldn't need to do a whole lot of examples of this because in, in one of our previous lessons, we talked about how to take the limit as x approaches infinity or as x approaches negative infinity, right? So you know, when, when, when we want to find a horizontal asymptote, we take this limit. If we get a number, it means there's a horizontal asymptote. If we don't get a number, it means there isn't a horizontal asymptote. It's as simple as that. If you already know how to find limits approaching infinity, then you already know how to find horizontal asymptotes. They're effectively the same thing. With all that said, it's, it's worth doing one example here. So go ahead and, and, you know, take a minute, find whether or not this function has any horizontal asymptotes. If it does have horizontal asymptotes, write them down. If not, sort of explain or show why, why it doesn't have any. Um, so pause the video, try that on your own. So remember that in order to find horizontal asymptotes, we're looking at taking the limit as x approaches infinity, or the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Um, I'm going to go ahead and approach this uh, by, by doing the limit as x approaches positive infinity. Sort of, as we get further into the problem, we can see whether or not the negative infinity will make a difference. So remember that our strategy when dealing with problems like these, when you're taking a limit, is that we, we will divide the top and bottom, everything in the problem, all of the, the terms, um, by x, right? Or rather, by the highest power of x in the denominator, which in this case is x. So I end up with sine of x over x minus 3, that's basically 3x over x, over 1 minus 1 over x. And this was the point where we then started thinking, like, okay, what happens when I take the limit as x approaches infinity? Right? Well, as x approaches infinity, we know that 1 over x is supposed to turn into 0. Right? We also know that this one up here, sine x over x, right? and, and this is one of the specific ones we've talked about before, sine x keeps changing, but it's small, whereas x is getting absurdly large, right? which means this is also turning into 0. 
right? So as x approaches infinity, or for that matter, as it approaches negative infinity, it doesn't matter, in, in both directions, this expression is approaching negative 3. And so that indicates to us that, that this function g of x has a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 3. And remember, horizontal asymptote is a line, it's not just negative 3, but we need to give the equation of that line, which is y equals negative 3. So anytime a problem asks for a horizontal asymptote, we look at taking the limit as x approaches infinity, or as x approaches negative infinity. That's all there is to it.